Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm so sorry. We're having technical difficulties today. Um, but my name is Katie. It's so nice to meet you all. Thank you all for joining me here today for a delicious Halloween meringue class. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background on me for those I haven't met. I'm a pastry chef, former bakery owner. Um, I love making all types of desserts. And we've got some really amazing classes coming up throughout the holiday season here with Michael's. Um, so I'm so excited to get into like more Halloween desserts like candy apples, cheesecake next week, uh, and also Thanksgiving desserts, Christmas desserts, and things like that. So if you love this class today, which hopefully you will, definitely come back and check out more classes. They're pretty much every Thursday around this time. Uh, so sign up if you can. But we are making meringue today, which is a really fun thing to make. And I do, I have to just open the chat. So hold on so I can see if anybody is saying anything along the way. Here we go. Uh, burr, 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 burr. So sorry. Here we go. There we go. So if you do have any questions along the way, definitely feel free to jump in and ask. Throw it up in the chat. I could see the chat from here pretty well. Um, so I will definitely try to answer them as they come in. But if not, Kena is here with me and she will uh, maybe call them out to me as well. But to get started, Kena, if you can come to the top down camera, I want to show you what ingredients I'm working with. And if you are able to bake with me today, uh, hopefully you have your ingredients on hand. Pretty simple ingredients. We're basically starting with egg whites. I've got three large egg whites. They are at room temperature. I've got granulated sugar, cream of tartar, uh, and we'll talk about why this is important later. A little bit of salt, so essential to balance the sweetness. Meringue is notoriously very sweet. Uh, and then I've got some fun stuff. I've got food coloring. I've got gel colors, which is really good for meringue. It's going to give you the most vibrant color uh, without thinning your meringue. I've got some candy eyes. I've got some other fun things. I've got piping bags, of course, and my stand mixer, but you can absolutely use a hand mixer as well to make meringue. So if you do want to bake along, the recipe is posted underneath the class description. Um, so you can definitely do that. And again, if you have questions along the way, definitely feel free to jump in and ask. Um, but to give you a little bit of some pointers before we start, Kena, you can come back up when you can. And I know I'm going to drive her crazy today with switching the cameras back and forth. Uh, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about some tips to keep in mind when you're making meringue. Um, I'm sure some of you have had this issue in the past where maybe you've made egg whites, you've whipped egg whites, and they just didn't whip up properly. Um, so if that does happen to you, I kind of want to just run you through some tips to keep that from happening. And the first one that I like to do, which is sort of like a fun tip, you might not have known this, or maybe you do, um, but acid is really important before you get started when you're making meringue. It's always good to wipe down all of your equipment. And so if you sort of think about it, egg whites, any bit of fat in egg whites, whether it's egg yolk or any sort of fat residue that's in your mixing bowl, will prevent your egg whites from whipping up properly. So if I did make a batch of cookies, let's say, and I'm going into making meringue, just as in insurance policy, I take a little bit of lemon juice or you can use vinegar or any sort of acid that you have. Just put a few drops on a paper towel. And then all I'm gonna do is use this just to wipe down my bowl. So I've got my bowl here. I'm gonna give it a swipe all over. That's gonna kill any fat that maybe is just lingering a little bit that could affect the volume of my meringue. And same goes for my whisk. I'm just gonna give it a little bit because you know stuff loves to hide in that top of the whisk. Um, so I'm just going to wipe that down as well. And that should really just give us that extra insurance that everything is going to whip up properly. So when it comes to egg whites, another key thing you want to keep in mind is having your egg whites at room temperature before you start. When you're separating eggs, you'll notice that eggs separate more easily when they're cold. So I do like to take them straight out of the fridge, separate them first. Um, but then I let them sit for about 15 to 30 minutes before I get started. And that's just going to bring them to room temperature. It's going to increase the volume, help with the stability of the meringue, and just give me a really overall great meringue to finish. Um, so that's something I like to do as well. So let's move this out of the way. We're going to start whipping. So we can come back down. I'm going to scoot this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. And you can absolutely do this with a hand mixer as well. Keep in mind with a hand mixer, it's going to take probably about double the time to whip your meringue properly. And meringue does take a minute. So there's gonna be some whipping happening here today. But I'm gonna go ahead and get my egg whites in my bowl. And the next thing I'm gonna add is my cream of tartar. So why is cream of tartar important? You've probably all seen this before in the supermarket. You've seen meringue recipes with cream of tartar. Does anybody know why cream of tartar is so important? And it is optional. 
but I'll give you a couple of seconds to answer that question while I measure this out. I've just got a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar going into my three egg whites. Anybody know? Any ideas? Cream of tartar is an acid. So what an acid does is it lowers the pH of our egg whites. It's going to really help to stabilize those proteins. And you can imagine as egg whites whip, that protein mesh uh, expands. It traps air bubbles. It gets bigger and bigger. And so what the, the cream of tartar does is sort of just help stabilize that mixture and keep your meringue up and keep it with the most volume and the most stability. So it is nice to use cream of tartar if you have it. It's something you just keep in your cabinet. Uh, and it is helpful when you're making meringue for sure. I'm going to go ahead and start whipping this up. And I'm at about medium speed. I'm going to let it go for a couple seconds. All right, so I'm giving this a whip. And as this whips, you're gonna see it's gonna change from something that's really frothy to something that's got a little bit more lift to it. It's gonna become a little bit more opaque. And I'm just gonna raise the speed a bit. And you'll notice I'm not adding my sugar yet. And the reason for that is we wanna add our sugar slowly once our egg whites have a little bit of volume in play. And that's just gonna help keep them from deflating once we add all that heavy sugar into the mix. We don't want it to weigh down our egg whites. <laughs> All right, so you can see I've got a little bit of a lift here. This is our classic frothy stage, and we're going to talk about peaks as well as we go along today. You can see I've got a really frothy texture, almost like a good cappuccino going on here. And so what we're gonna do is start adding our sugar slowly. And we're gonna do that by just streaming it in nice and slow against the side of the bowl. And somebody throw something into the chat just so I know it's working. Can anyone see my messages? Oh, perfect, thank you so much. All right, great. All right, so I'm gonna slowly stream in my sugar down the side of the bowl. And you can see I'm doing this slowly. I'm just sort of tapping it in. Nice, steady stream. And just keep it on that medium to medium high speed. And just nice and steady right down the side. That's Again, that's going to keep us from deflating our egg whites. It's going to leave everything really light and airy. Got three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. Now you can use super fine sugar as well. That's going to give you an even smoother meringue. So if you have that on hand, that's great. And now's when we're really going to let it go for a bit. And when it gets to soft peaks, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to show you what they look like. And then we'll go from there. So the other things I have to flavor my meringue, I've got vanilla bean paste, I've got salts. You could add things like extracts. You could add peppermint extract for Christmas would be really nice. Uh, almond extract, lemon extract, you know, anything that you prefer. Zest, spices, anything you like in a dry form is great. As you get into more liquid forms of flavoring, uh, just keep in mind that the more you add, the more it's gonna thin your meringue a little bit. So kind of be wary about how much you're adding. All right, we're letting it go here for a couple of minutes. Sorry for the long whip, but this is gonna take a couple of minutes here. All right, so let's check out what we've got. So when we look for peaks, peaks are really important when we talk about egg whites. If I look at my peak right now, bring it to the camera, 
you can see it's got some good height to it, right? It's kind of holding its shape. And classically, when a peak stands up like this and it sort of hooks over, that's almost a medium peak. If you think stiff peak, you're thinking like a mohawk, right? It's going to kind of stand straight up. If you keep going from that, it's going to become dry. It's going to become overwhipped. What we're looking for is somewhere between a medium and a stiff. So it's going to really hold our texture when we pipe our cookies. And it's not going to deflate on us. We want it nice and glossy. So I'm going to let it go just for another minute or so. Now, at this point, if you were adding color, which we're actually going to do in our bag, so it's going to be a little bit different today. But if you are adding any sort of color, now is definitely the time before you're at the peak that you want. This way, your color has a nice amount of time to sort of incorporate into the mix before your egg whites get to that perfect peak you're looking for. All right. Well, let's see where we're at now. Look at this. Oh, this is glorious. Look at that. So check out what we've got going. We've got some really nice sort of medium to stiff peaks. It's holding up nicely. If I turn it upside down, it's not going anywhere. It's really stable. It's really glossy and smooth. That's exactly what we want when we're piping cookies. The one thing I did not add yet is my salt and my vanilla. So I'm going to go ahead and just toss that in really quickly. I've got an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Salt is so important when we talk about meringues. Meringues can be so sweet. So that salt really does balance. And if you are not a fan or not, if you haven't used this before, the Nielsen Massey, the vanilla bean paste, I just love it. It's I put it in everything. So I definitely recommend it, but it does add flecks of vanilla bean to your meringues, which you may like, you may not like. You could also just use extract. That would be fine too. All right, that's it, it's it. So I talked about color. So actually what we're gonna do today, because I wanna use this meringue in a variety of ways, I didn't color my entire meringue. So this way we can get a variety of colors out of one batch. But if you do wanna color, feel free to do any color you love. Again, gel color is definitely preferable to liquid. It's gonna keep your meringue from thinning out. But I do have a baking sheet lined with parchment and my oven is preheated to 250 degrees. Oh, Sue, yours is not getting thick. Keep going, keep whipping, Sue. Another tip is if you are working with a plastic bowl, keep in mind that that can kind of trap fat as well. It's always good to work with a stainless steel bowl when you're whipping. And what we're gonna do is I've got some piping bags. So we're gonna do a variety of shapes today. I'll show you what I made before, just so you could see what I'm sort of going for here. So I've got some different things. So we're gonna do like some little fun, like little candy corn kisses. I've got some snowmen, we're gonna decorate those. I've got these little monsters that are kind of swirled with different colors. We're gonna add some candy eyes to those guys. I thought we could do some pumpkins as well. And out of this one batch of meringue, you're gonna get pretty much like a full sheet tray of meringues. Um, so it's a good amount of meringue. You can double this, you can triple this if you have room in your mixer. Feel free to amp it up as much as you like. And whenever I'm working with a piping bag, I fold down the top. That's going to keep my edge nice and clean. And I'm just going to put my tip in. So the first tip I'm going to start with is just my medium round. You can see this is about a half inch round going right in. Go ahead and give it a trim. And you just want your tip to clear the bag. You never want your tip to be too far down that it's going to pop out accidentally. And if I'm just going with a white meringue, I could just use my meringue exactly as it is. 
And then for the next one, I'm going to show you how I'm coloring it a bit. I'm just going to put a little bit of my meringue in my bag. Take my top back up. You can see now it's nice and clean on the top. Give it a smush. And we're going to start by doing some fun things like bones and things like that. So actually, Kana, if you want to come down to the side camera, let's see if we can get a closer shot here so you guys can see a bit better. There we go. That's good. All right. So here I've got my meringue. It's ready to pipe. So to pipe some bones, which is kind of just like a fun Halloween sort of situation, I'm just going to take my bag and I'm going to make two rounds, almost as if I was piping a heart. And I'm just going to pull and make two rounds on the other side. Let me go a little bit closer where you can see here. Do, 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 do. Hello. I've got my bones. So two rounds, one round, two rounds, pull, 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 and one round, two rounds. And if you find that when you're piping your meringue, you get some of these little kisses, wet your finger with a little bit of water and just use that just to flatten it out. And that's going to get rid of any of those little kisses you've got and just make a really perfect meringue. So here we've got some cute bones going on. That's one fun thing you can do. If I want to do, did I call them snowmen before? I meant ghosts. If I want to make ghosts, just build up your meringue as high as you want to go. You can build it up again and make as high as you like. You could swirl them, make some fun ghosts that way. And we're actually going to dip those in chocolate and do some sprinkles. And that should be really cute some fun ghosts going on. Now, if I want to color my bag, which can be really fun to do, and we actually did this in the Mac Brune class last week, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my bag, fold down the top, and let's do our star tip. I've got like a medium star right in there. Give it a trim. Now, before I add my meringue, I'm going to take a little bit of my gel color and just a paintbrush, my baking paintbrush. And I'm just gonna paint my bag, which is a really fun way of getting really vivid color without adding it directly to the meringue. So you can make a variety of colors just by painting. I'm gonna take my, my paintbrush, I dipped it into my gel, and all I'm doing is painting my bag with my color, just making a line right inside the bag. Sue, how is your meringue doing? Let us know. Make sure you go all the way to the bottom where the tip is. You can see I'm just kind of building it. Because you'll find sometimes when you're piping, you get all this white right off the bat, and you're like waiting and waiting for the color to come. And it's because maybe you didn't go deep enough into the bag. So same thing with my orange. Now flip the bag over and do the other side all the way in with my orange. This is going to give us a really nice swirl. You could add other colors. You could change it up. You'll see we'll do that for the monsters. Maybe we'll do some green and some purple. And you will always get the color in your hands when you do that. No matter how clean you are, you're always going to get color. So I'm go ahead and same thing. I'm going to add the meringue to my bag. And add it towards the top, and I'll show you why. As you push down, it's going to kind of grab that color. And my meringue, and I'm going to fold up the top and give it a push. And you can see that color, right? Starting to swirl down the sides, which is really fun. All right, so now for piping, we should start to get some color. Maybe not right off the bat, but eventually. Let's give it a second. You can do some fun shapes. And as that color comes out, it's going to start to swirl really nicely. You can see I'm getting, on one side I'm getting orange, on the other side I'm getting yellow. And that's just a really easy way to like make these really pretty swirls. That's fun for Christmas with peppermints. 
You could do a red and white. Really anything you like. And these are so cute. Look how they swirl. I'm trying to see all that color. And these can pipe pretty close together. They're going to expand just a bit as they start baking, but you can really pack these onto your baking sheet without worrying too much. They're so cute. So fun. Cute little candy corn kisses. All right, so let's do one more fun one. Let's do some monsters. What do you guys vote? Monsters or pumpkins? Let me know in the chat if you have a preference. Monster. Thank you, Tina. All right. Monster it up. So same deal for monsters. Move this out of the way so you can see here. So same idea, roll, roll down the top of my bag. I'm using a small round. You could do a medium round, it doesn't matter. Make little monsters. And same idea, we're gonna paint our bag, but this time instead of painting with yellow and orange, we're gonna paint with purple and green. That's kind of fun. Everybody likes a green monster. All right, dip it in your gel. Give it a brush. And you don't even have to be so careful. You could really just like throw in some color. I feel like for Halloween, it's one of those holidays where it's like more color is better. My, my color is getting real fun over here. I've got this really nice violet. And what's nice about this set nice violet versus I have like an Americolor also. Ooh, somebody else wants pumpkins. We'll see if we have enough meringue for that. Uh, the downside to Americolor is that the purple always comes out blue. I don't know if anybody else notices that, but it drives me crazy. I always have to add red to my purple to make it blue. But this particular, here we go, the satin ice, it's like a really beautiful violet, which is nice. All right, let's add some meringue. I think I have enough for pumpkins. We'll only do a few monsters. Shroosh it down, get some color. Ooh, look at that. Nice swirl. And don't under whip your meringue. If there are any questions about, oh, is it stiff enough? Keep going. Like at this point, if I notice, you know what? It's not quite stiff enough for me. Throw your whip back in and just let it go like another minute or so, and that's fine. All right, so same idea as my, keep wanting to call them snowmen, but my ghosts, I'm going to kind of build them up. We'll wait for that color to come a little bit. But as I get to the top, I'm going to take it and just make a few kisses just to give him like some fun spiky hair. You can see it's starting to swirl. See that fun color? And monsters can be pretty weird. So you can get pretty fun with this. And you'll see the ones I baked before. Once you add the candy eyes, they're like really funny. They remind me of like Ghostbusters style. Okay. So just some kisses. You can see they're just fun. They're fun, guys. And once they bake up, you'll see later. But you get like these cute little guys here with like this little pointy hair. And once you add an eye, it's like instant monster. It's really cute. All right, so if we have a minute, we're going to do pumpkins real quick. Let's get some orange in a bag. I used up all my bags and all my tips, so let me just grab one more. <laughs> All right, we need orange, we need green. So 
So green is gonna be for our stems, orange is gonna be for our pumpkin bodies. And I am down to the nubbins here. I've got very little left, so we're gonna to try to make it work. Now to color my whole batch, I'm gonna take a little bit out just for green. It's still this guy. A little green for our stems and leaves. And I'll show you a trick on making a quick leaf tip without a tip, because that's always useful. But the rest, to color it orange, we're just gonna add a little bit of our orange gel. We can get it out. Come on out. Boop. And a little goes a long way, actually, when you talk about this gel. That's the whole beauty of it. I'm just going to mix it in. If I notice this is deflating, and meringue does deflate as it sits a bit, just give it a little bit of a whip just to bring it back to life. And I'm going to do that really quickly. And you could probably come back up for a minute if you don't mind. It's just going to be one moment. Anna, come back to me. We lost her. Oh, there we go. Thank you so much. Okay. So you can see my orange is like a little light. So I'm going to add a little bit more orange. Pretty good. I'm not a fan of like super orange. The candy corn is pretty cute, but otherwise. All right, I've got my bag again and you can totally choose. It's up to you, rounds, stars, pumpkins can kind of be either one. If you do want to paint on any sort of like jack-o'-lantern face with chocolate afterwards, I would say go for round because it's just a little bit easier to decorate. I've got my green waiting here. Hello, friends. All right. So give that a push. Everybody see? Could probably come back down to the side guy if you don't mind. Thank you so much. She's killing it. Thank you, Kana. All right. So just go ahead and build it up. We're just making rounds. We're just making little domes. And leave a little kiss because that's almost going to be like our stem. You can see I'm not not too far from the bacon sheep, but far enough that my meringue is sort of falling. Right? This is going to give me a little bit more height. Just let it see I'm sort of hovering above the baking sheet and I'm just pushing, 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 pushing. Just so I get a little bit of a cute pumpkin situation. A mound. That's plenty. Now, if we want a quick and easy leaf tip without having a leaf tip, I've got a little bit extra meringue here. I'm just going to add my green color too. Oops. 
Do you have green you want it? I'm going to go a little greener than that. It's always fun to play with color, adding like a little bit of brown to your green. It'd be really nice. Same with adding a little brown to your orange to get like a little bit more of that pumpkin-y color. You could add some pumpkin spice to your pumpkins. That'd be really yummy. I'm trying not to be too generous, but it's just, it's just not green enough. Come to me. This thing is tapped out. I've used it all. Oh, there we go. Okay. You obviously don't need a big piping bag for this. I do like to keep, I keep like two sizes of piping bags on hand. I like having big ones, right? Like a 16 inch is great, even a 12 inch. But also having like little throwaway bags like this can just be helpful when you're piping chocolate, when you're doing fun little tasks like that. It could be helpful. Now, if I want to do two different things, if I want to do some, let's say some vines, I'm not going to cut this yet because I'm just going to do a very small hole. And then I'll use the same bag to turn into more of a leaf tip. Let's open this up the same way. Get our meringue in. Our tiny, tiny bit of meringue. We're just going to do a very, very small hole for our vine. Very tiny. And the beauty of meringue is you could bake with different decorations like this. Let's just test it before we do it on the okay. too small. Tiny, tiny hole. Just a tiny little line. So if I want to do some vines, just take my green and just let it fall as I pipe. Just do some cute, some cute little line. We'll do some more. It just gives us like a fun, a fun pumpkin-y situation. Don't overthink it. Thank you, little vine. Now, if I want to add leaves, I'm going to take my tip. And I'm just going to cut a V. So I'm going to take it and just V it on one side and V it on the other side. I've got, I don't know if you could see that, I know it's very close, but I've just got a little bit of an angle cut on either side. It's just Ving out. Now I'm going to turn it in this direction. And when I pipe, Just makes like a little leaf. Just makes a little triangle, just like that. Just by cutting that little V. Now I can just add a couple of leaves. You could add like a little brown stem. You could do anything you want. After they come out with a little bit of chocolate, like we're going to decorate some of the ghosts. You could use that for a jack-o'-lantern face. Oh, just some like really cute little pumpkins. Little leaves and things. I know, I went on like a very light orange. I was like very pastel, but you can definitely go deeper on the orange color. And that would be cute too. You could use a star tip. Get more of that like ridged pumpkin look. All right, so these are gonna go in the oven. So they bake at 250 degrees. If your oven, for some reason, uh, and Kena, you can totally come back up because I'm probably gonna talk for a minute. If your oven is great, 
and it uh, does really well at 200 degrees. The lower and slower that you can bake your meringues, the more crisp, the more smooth, the less wrinkling that's going to happen. Uh, just the more beautiful they'll come out. The lower and longer and slower you can make them, the better. Uh, for some reason, my oven is like extra high powered and I should move this. Uh, and it only does well at 250. So I bake mine at 250. Uh, and they're going to take about, depending on the size, you'll notice, of course, we have like our kisses are smaller than our monsters, than our ghosts. Um, so some of them are going to be ready a bit sooner, probably around the 60 minute mark, the one hour mark. Some of them may take more like 90 minutes. Once they are done, you should be able to pull them off of the baking sheet, break one of them open. That's your baker's snack. Uh, and it should be nice and set all the way through. If for some reason it's soft, it's chewy, it's gummy in the middle a little bit, leave them in for longer. Just really let them go. Let them bake as low and slow as possible. Then once they're done, just turn the oven off and leave them in for another 30 minutes or so. The more slowly they can cool, the better they're going to end up the more crisp throughout, the smoother, the more glossy and lovely. Uh, so low and slow and slow cooling is key. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these in and then I'm gonna grab the ones I already made. And we're just gonna finish them up. So I've got a few different designs here. Let's get this over. And I do have dark chocolate that I just melted on the stove top over a double boiler. Uh, but you can do that in the microwave as well. So I've got, like we did before, so I've got ghosts, these guys here. I've got our kisses. We're really just going to leave these as is, or you could dip them in chocolate also. That'd be fun. I've got my monsters. We're going to add eyes to those. I've got bones. You could decorate these with red candy melts. Uh, that'd be really fun. You could dip, leave a cup of like a strawberry syrup that you make for dipping, uh, like blood. That'd be really cute also if you're serving these at a party. Um, but we're just going to finish them up. So I'm going to grab my dark chocolate. And again, this was melted just over a double boiler, so it's nice and smooth. This is regular dark chocolate. You can use candy melts, you know, coatings, anything like that. I've got candy eyes in different shapes. And it does come with a nice mix. If you go to Michael's around now for like the Halloween stuff, they've got a bag that has like a mixed bag of sizes. That's really helpful for this. I've got some of these fun Halloween sprinkles. And a piping bag for our chocolate. And that's it. We're going to finish them up. So, so we can come back down to the side camera when you're ready. And then I won't bother you back here with any more. Thank you so much. All right. So we're just going to finish these guys. So I'm going to take my bag and just put a little bit of my dark chocolate, my melted dark chocolate. Always make sure if you're working with a double boiler that the bottom of your bowl is nice and dry before you go ahead and pour your chocolate into anything because any little bit of water is gonna affect your chocolate. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit into my bag. Do, 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 do. Oops, this is fine. And we're ready to go. Close this out. And the first thing I'm do, gonna do is just give my ghost some faces. So as small as you can cut your tip, you'll notice I'm not using a tip, I'm just using my bag. If you have a tiny tip that you like to use, you can use that as well. But for this, you can really just cut a very, very small hole and that's gonna do the job. Always test it, either on your baking sheet or on your hand, just to see how big your, your hole is here. And all I'm gonna do is come in with my ghosts and just give them some eyes. Give it a little note. Spooky. And just let him set. Now, before I do the next one, if you want to just switch it up a little bit, I'm going to take some of our chocolate and just give it a dip first. I'm going to dip my bottom just into my chocolate, just to coat. And you see, like, how nice that is to dip. It just gives it like really pretty finish. Always wipe off the excess. So I'm going to take the bottom and just wipe it just against the side of my bowl. This way you don't get what's called a foot, right? Right into my sprinkles. And that's just like a cute Halloween situation you got going on here. Right back on. Then I can add my face. Do 
could also do this with edible markers if you want to. That'd be fun also. To finish up our monsters, got my monster face here. I'm just gonna add a little chocolate as glue. Just add my big eyeball. He's kind of fun. He reminds me of like a minion. And the one thing you don't really want to do with meringues is put them in the refrigerator. So if you are getting your chocolate to set, candy coatings, you know, or any sort of candy melts can be really helpful for that reason. You don't have to chill them to help them set. But if you are trying to get your chocolate to chill faster, just put it in a cool spot. Avoid putting it in the freezer or the fridge. That humidity is going to kind of mess with your meringue and soften it a little bit. And we don't want that. We want it to stay really nice and crisp. I don't even want to say thanks, Tina. I like him. He's fun. So we could also do like a little bit of a drizzle. We could drizzle him a little bit. He's kind of cute. You could add some sprinkles. Have a lot of fun with these. This is the great part for kids. Once you've made the meringue, get the kids in to finish them up. I've got eyes in different sizes. Oh, he lost his eye. Come back. You go. You stay over there. You could really have fun with these and decorate them any way you like. And you can see once you break in, you know you've got the good texture. Here, we'll take one of these. We'll sacrifice our bone. That's what you want all the way through. Nice and crisp. You're going to store these in an airtight container at room temperature. If you are serving them at a party, uh, you can make them up to maybe two or three days ahead. Um, and uh, Kena, you can definitely come back up when you can. You can make them two or three days ahead. Just store them in an airtight container at room temperature. Again, avoid refrigeration, avoid freezing. Uh, that humidity is just not worth it, but they will stay really well for a while. Um, you'll find those, those little um, packets of silica beads. If you like to use things like that, that'll keep them dry for longer. That could be helpful as well. Uh, but in general, just airtight container. Keep them on hand. They'll be great for serving. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. So any questions, feel free to jump in the chat, ask away. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for joining me here for Meringues today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was so fun to bake with you. So I hope to see you back next week for a cheesecake class. And thank you guys so much. Thank you.